Hi friends, I'm so glad that you dropped into the blog today for the follow-up to last week's blog post about our feelings, our emotions, re-engaging them in godly ways to make a difference in the world around us. I want to introduce you to two of my special friends, Beth Griffiths and Karen McNary. They are both on staff with me. Um, with Proverbs 31 Ministries work together here on an unusual day and mm -hmm. so excited and excited to be with you. I wanted you to hear about a trip that Karen and Beth took back in the summer? April. Mm -hmm. April, okay. And it was a really significant trip in both of their lives. So will one of you kind of just describe the trip in general? So it was a pilgrimage to um, chronicle uh, slavery in Virginia. And so we um, went to different touch points to talk about what slavery looked like in the uh, city of Richmond. Wow. So um, I, what I wanted to ask you about, because I've heard the stories from you, is I think you both had a really significant experience on the trip. The trip as a whole was impactful. But Beth, would you start and tell us about one of the places that you went, one of the experiences that you had that created a real emotional impact for you. Yeah, I will and I'll try not to cry. Okay. <laughs> because uh, just the fact that I even went on this trip, I, it, it amazes me. But uh, still it surprised me. Why, why, this has not been my journey. Why do I feel so passionate about it? But I think it was, I just wanted to learn more. You know, I felt like throughout my life I haven't Empathy is a big, I feel like I'm empathetic, but um, I don't think I've really looked at um, the plight of, of slavery in America in a way that, I, that touched me really deep. Yes. And um, that, that Lenten devotional every day took us to places that uh, was just really, God was doing a mighty work in my heart at the time. Um, and so we went, we had a girl trip, road trip, and we started in Alexandria, and then we went to Richmond, and then we finished up in Monticello. And Alexandria was very powerful walking through the community. Um, something about the Richmond experience, though, just was so powerful. Um, we pulled up, and, and we were in a great big bus, and they pulled us up into this uh, monolith. It was like a little mini uh, Washington monument in Richmond. And it was a Confederate monument. Mm. <laughs> and we got off the bus going, really? What? This is where we are? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Start yeah. Crying too. <laughs> Just living through you and guys. We, and we were up on, the, it was a high point. This is why they put the monument there, because it was a high point, physical high point. And you could look over the James River. And so they, they brought in a tour guide, and his name was Reverend T. And he was, what would you say, 60 maybe? Mm. Older? Wow, well, he didn't well, look you know that old. We know say black don't crack. So. Yeah, so, I mean. <laughs> so you he, get to say that. Yes. Yes. You all can say it because we're friends. Yes. Yes. And it's true. Yes, it is it true. Is true. <laughs> he, um, he, he said, okay, you're going to be surprised why I brought you here. And we were like, this mm -hmm. is, I'm starting to get a little angry. Like, why are we here? And he said, because we need to know our sacred stories. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to know what is important to them and that they're they're through the sacred stories there is pain and then there hopefully is redemption and forgiveness and but you have to acknowledge the pain so he said this place right here the native americans this was their high ground mm -hmm. oh, wow. they could see what was coming around the banks of the river that this was a very powerful place for them and it might have been even a place where they buried mm -hmm. their dead mm -hmm. Um, a high mound and then when the Confederates the Richmond was the seat of the Confederacy mm -hmm. you know the, and so um, the the women that lost there were a lot of people that died in yes. that war you know and there was sadness on their part and so they were fighting for a cause that they believed but still there was sadness so and then he said and from that war and the slavery that, that this one special place, I'm probably not doing it justice, step in, that three, three communities could come together because there was mm -hmm. sadness. Mm -hmm. wow. you know, America, we came in and just raped the land from the Native Americans and said, okay, we're in charge now. 
So there was sadness from their perspective. And then breaking apart our country and saying that, you know, the South versus the North, there was sadness. And then, oh my word, what we did to the enslaved population, it's huge sadness. Well, so so he, let me ask you, in, so at that moment, it sounds like there was a mix of emotions that I you I was had. sobbing. So sobbing. What, what, what he you, probably was looking at me feeling? like, what is this white girl? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he just said it so well. He, he just had compassion. Yeah. This is a man who grew up having to eat in the back of a restaurant, mm -hmm. go to the back to get food. He couldn't even sit in the restaurant. He said, I remember not being able to go to that theater and white mm -hmm. versus colored water, water fountains. fountains. I mean, he grew up in this yeah. environment, but he could still have the compassion. Mm -hmm. So you took And on there was no anger or bitterness. He mm -hmm. was like, we, he just was this personification of God's love. Oh, so I was about to say, so God has done Absolute work in him, and through him, you felt compassion, mm -hmm. empathy, what else? Uh, for I would I was sobbing because I was so, um, I was I was mourning what had happened, mm. you know that how could my race do that to another race? Mm -hmm. I mean it, it, that that those are the layers. I was I just was like, you know that you could look at me with love and respect instead of anger for generations of generations, you know, mm -hmm. and then. And, and he, he and a group of people helped create the slave trail. You know, people knew where it was, but there weren't markers, there weren't historical uh -huh. reverent things that talked about it. So he and a group of folks raised money and created these beautiful markers where you could say, this is the dock in this area, this is where the boat came in, that you could read about it. And then we walked along the trail. Powerful. Mm. And he told us to hold our hand. We, after about, I don't know, 20 paces, I was like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> My arms hurt, you know? And then I thought to myself, this is nothing. Mm -hmm. So there was this physical thing physical, that Physical, like that we were trying to recreate also. what a slave would Amazing. feel like walking mm -hmm. through this brush. Well, I'm gonna come back to you because okay. what I wanna know in just a minute for us to think about is all those emotions that happen in those that place, mm. how has it, propelled you forward mm -hmm. into action. But I'll come back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Karen, you <laughs> like, tell us about like your I'm moment. I I um. <sighs> okay, so last week while Karen takes a breath too, I wrote about Karen's writing on this. We will put the link to that so you can read what she writes about this experience because it Reading what Karen wrote is what broke my heart, finally. Mm -hmm. I've been mm -hmm. reading the devotionals. Mm -hmm. I have been impacted by them, but not in the way I knew I should be. But then, because I love Karen, and I read what she wrote, it was like the dam finally burst. Yes. You know, like the, the lament that really yeah. needed yes. to happen, happened. So tell yeah. us about it. Sorry, okay. Karen. No. I think for me, going to um, the slave graveyard to me was probably the most impactful um, because we had just left Monticello, and if you've been there, it's this you know beautiful plantation, um, very well kept, and you know beautiful library. And I kept thinking, but it was at the expense of over 600 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people who look like me that labored. And so I really just, I found the whole experience, frankly, vulgar. When I just mm. thought about it, I saw the graveyard of his white children, but we know he had multiple children mm. by Sam, Sally Hemings and where are they? So I, I just, I really mm. just couldn't. So that put me in a bad place because this is what we're celebrating. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it just didn't sit well with me. But then we went to Corhaven and it was this, you know, simple, you know, just very simple, but it just, it felt very elegant. And I think I thought about the man who purchased his property and he cared enough to research and spend his money yes. and, and just a beautiful, simple graveyard mm -hmm. that's probably not as big as this room. And so I feel like my emotions, even now, like listening to Beth, it's like, it's not her story, but she cared enough to, <laughs> and you care enough to ask me about it. <laughs> So I think that's what I feel joy 
because this is what the body of Christ is. Yes. Because yes. you don't you you don't have to, but you care enough to come with me and mourn with me, and let me cry on your shoulder mm -hmm. and ask me about it. Mm -hmm. So I think how I am compelled forward is that I'm going to stay involved. Mm. I'm staying connected. Yes. Um, because that's what God compels me to do, but that's what the emotion does. So yes, I it, there's sadness because you're right that this was these are my descendants that you know this is this is the reality of, of what and we still have residuals today yes but in every aspect there's a remnant here so in every aspect the lord gave me this is remnant so it's not black white it's the heart of the people and yes. he, he showed yes. me that in every mm -hmm. every area from from when they got off the jamestown to even today mm -hmm. so i just i'm so um grateful for the experience it was very healing for me but it's, it's wanted me to stay engaged, and, and it's okay to, and to feel the sadness because I, you know, I don't want to cry, but it's right, like, yeah. I'm sad. Yeah, of course. But I'm also the tears of joy because I'm sitting here. I'm the only black person here. Yeah. And y'all are so with grateful. me, and you're yes. with me, but you're yes. with me. You're yes. lamenting. We're sharing. So to me, that is what that's the message is to is to is to engage. You know, let those emotions propel you. Don't mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm not engage because you feel shame or because right. we're going to cry or, right. or there's guilt because the, the Lord can, all that, you know, that's what the cross is for. So, oh, girl. I mean, so. you, that's, that's a sermon right yeah. there. And that's what this whole series is really about is that I've gotten the privilege to listen to Karen and some of my other friends who've been willing to trust me with their stories. And and that takes time, mm -hmm. right, to, the, to build that it trust. It, um, and so I've been able to listen. And then I want us to feel, because as an American culture, we just have numbed ourselves mm -hmm. True. so much, just so many things. And so a lot of it, I think, is because we're overwhelmed right. by the needs around us. Mm -hmm. um, but we, I want us to stop numbing ourselves so that we can engage with God's heart Mm -hmm. You know, and what and the reconciliation that he wants from the cross that he he initiated at the cross and that we can start to engage these issues that God lays heavy on our hearts. Mine happens to be racial reconciliation. Yours might be something different. Mm -hmm. So, Beth, so you've been part of this group at Proverbs mm -hmm. with me. So how have these emotions propelled you into some action? Um. I don't think I've taken enough action, actually. Um, we all feel we all that feel that way. way. Yeah. But uh, it's just exploded my mind to an awareness that I maybe didn't have before. Mm -hmm. right. But I, I don't want to discount because I think you said I'm not doing enough. Mm -hmm. But caring enough to research—that's huge. Because every time we came to the meeting, you had. A, a newspaper article or I mean there there's an e education is big mm. yes yes you know and so you are re-educating yourself mm -hmm. and that's huge so to say that that's I mean, you're not doing enough that's huge because now you the lens with which you look is different yes yeah. that's exactly what so it is. I just don't want to you know that's every huge. step counts. Yes. Yes. yes every step yes. counts yes. and that's what we're trying to do here yes is to start taking steps towards caring about the things that God cares mm -hmm. about and then um, eventually doing something yes. about it. And, and part of it is educating ourselves, yes. becoming aware, mm -hmm. feeling, mm -hmm. listening to the stories, the sacred stories, I yes. love that, yeah. feeling the hurt that people feel, understanding their perspective, and then watching for where God wants to use yes. them. So that's a great place yes. to start because mm -hmm. I don't want to make my friends miss lunch today. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much. No, thank you. Oh. Thank you for <laughs> asking. You. Yes. Oh, yes. Coming so with me. This yes. was a gift. So thank you for watching today. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Bye, friends.